Yeah, I think I would imagine you could have gone up to as much as maybe a 90 uh, millimeter on IA and, and still been able to because all the shots that we got for you were all distance shots. So that's something that was much easier to work with that way. Yeah, exactly. I think that we were keen to go to a 180 view um, on the GV content because it was a, a it was meant to be a break or kind of like a, a break in between the macro content. So we were keen for it to be as wide as possible. But certainly on reviewing rectilinear content um, where we had some really nice photo time lapses of stars and trees um, that were close up, when we actually reviewed those in a headset, it did make us think that to make immersive content, you don't always need to have a wide angle lens. As long as the resolution is wide enough to saturate the whole field of view within the headset, there was something quite nice, I think, and, and unexpected about being in a tele, uh, tele zoom field of view in a headset. It was, and it's a, a, something that I haven't experienced before and something that I'd, I'd really recommend other people to check out because as you said, if you have a really nice camera and two of them put next to each other, um, you can produce a, a 3D image of, of cinema quality inside a headset now. Um, so instead of waiting around for evolutions and immersive camera sensor technology, um, maybe we should be looking at other forms of, of, of uh, shooting uh, and not conforming ourselves to this spherical video concept, which obviously came from you know, the early 2015 and onwards with various consumer cameras. I think uh, Florian Meyer's uh, stereoscopic rig that was used, for instance, for Gemini Man, which Ang Lee used for shooting Gemini Man at 120 frames per second, that's the type of camera that I think would have worked very, very well, and you could have adjusted the IA. So that would have been, I think, uh, a good alternative. But, you know, we kind of learn as we move forward with all this. It's a lot of it is experimentation and moving on. So it's it's it, that's a very interesting point yeah exactly i mean since since we made micro monsters we've been uh, talking to the creators of the cube rig which again if you look at the behind the scenes you'll see is is, is a pr the prism based system that the red camera is fired into to allow uh, the us to achieve um hyper macro uh, 3d cinematography um, and we've been talking to them about the advances that have happened since that rig was created and the possibility of creating a wider angle version to be used for specific, you know, VR and immersive capture, um, so I think the the opportunity is there. I think it does limit us creatively a little bit, but perhaps that's a good thing. I think often being limited creatively ultimately helps you turn out a, a better product. Um, but we, we we will see. We'll have to see what happens. And with things like the InstaPro Titan, um, the resolution now is there in the consumer market to saturate the new headsets. And I think once that happens. Um, creators might start to push the boat out more and experiment more, especially as the headset market grows. So now you've, you know, Alchemy has been involved in a great deal of VR projects. What's coming up for you guys? What's the next exciting thing that you're going to be working on? Can you give us a little bit of an idea? Yeah, so for us, Alchemy, for the next 12 months, we're looking at primarily virtual reality experiences, but also augmented reality experiences that we can distribute uh, via app stores. Um, I think we're seeing a growth in headset adoption, especially with Quest 2. Um, and we're seeing more AR compatible devices come to market as well as manufacturers like Apple starting to push those. So focusing on educational enriched content, uh, looking at our the amazing IP that we have as a company. So brands like uh, the RMS Titanic that we dived on for the first time in 15 years uh, at the beginning of this year, or, or was it last year? I've forgotten now. Um, Stephen Hawking, uh, as, a, as a VR project that we're looking at bringing to location-based and platforms in the next year or so. And then more David Attenborough IP, of course, that we're looking at bringing both to VR, but also to AR uh, through apps that will allow people to bring you know, extinct animals back to life uh, or to read up and, and have a more of an educational experience through uh, video content and written uh, written pieces. Well, I got to tell you, that's all fantastic. And I want to thank you so much for your time. And I certainly hope that we get a chance to work together again. Yeah, of course, Al. Thanks a lot for your help. And uh, for sure, if any of your viewers have any questions about what we did for Micro Monsters or how they might do something similar, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Will do. I'll mention it in the, uh, in the classes. Uh, I've got three classes coming up in the next two days. So... Definitely, I'll get the word out. Thank you Great. so much. Thanks a lot for your time, Al.